now we want to talk about the two main uh, types of reasoning used in science the confirmation of a scientific hypothesis and the disconfirmation. of a scientific hypothesis. And I suspect we're just going to go over the basics here. They're really just yeah. the basics. <laughs> this stuff goes And this And is, this is sometimes called, uh, th this is generally applicable to hypothetical reasoning in general, mm -hmm. not just in science, but in all kinds of other areas. But we begin with a hypothesis uh, that we're going to test. And th from the hypothesis, we derive a prediction. The prediction is something that's expected if the hypothesis is true. So for instance, uh, suppose someone's sick and a doctor has a hypothesis. He has chicken pox. Then the prediction would be that if they perform such and such an operation or a test, they'll find a certain type of bacteria or virus, or whatever, so yeah. they'll find something. Anyway, you have a hypothesis, and the way we test it is we, we derive a prediction, and the prediction is something we would expect to be true if the hypothesis is true. And then we go looking and see if the prediction is true. If the prediction turns out to be true, then we, con we conclude that the hypothesis is probably true based on that. I certainly wouldn't prove it. It doesn't prove that the hypothesis must be true. So this is, um, if you just look at this abstractly, this is the pattern of reasoning, the, the formal fallacy called affirming the consequent, right, isn't it? Right. Formally speaking, this is an invalid argument. Just because if H then P and P is true, it doesn't follow H must be true. So formally, this is invalid reasoning. But this is not meant to be a valid argument. It's an inductive argument. The conclusion is only that the hypothesis is probably true. And when the prediction comes true, we say that the hypothesis has been confirmed. But confirmation is a matter of degree. Mm -hmm. And so the more times this happens, the more the confirmation, right? We might come up with another prediction. Like if this hypothesis is true, Prediction P prime. P prime mm -hmm. would be true. And if we test it, P prime comes out. By golly, we're even more encouraged to think the hypothesis is looking good. We might come up with a third prediction. And if that one comes out true, we are really confident the hypothesis is true. Never going to quite prove it this way. We'll never reach 100% certainty, yeah. but we can increase our probability with each new confirming action. A lot of stuff in life, including medicine, does need absolute certainty. Mm -hmm. if, I've, if I'm sick and the doctor has really, really good reason to believe it's chicken pox, mm -hmm. um, then fine, treat it as chicken pox. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been wanting to do. It may not ha be 100% certain. It may cost a million dollars to become 100% certain. Even if it may not even be possible to be 100% certain. May not, not but it could be close enough to, to bet the hospital on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the more confirming instances, the higher the probability. The more times this happens, it's never certain. And, and then we might add that the riskier the prediction, the higher the probability. A risky prediction is a prediction that is likely to be true if the hypothesis is true, but it's unlikely to be true if the hypothesis is false. Mm -hmm. In other words, without the hypothesis, we wouldn't expect that prediction. So it's risky, it's unexpected, it's surprising. A good example of this is Einstein's uh, theory of rel special theory of relativity. Um, Einstein predicted that if light from a star passes close to a, a heavy body like the sun, that it would be bent by about two degrees. And uh, he predicted that. Now, there was no known theory that would, would make that prediction. I mean, based on all existing theories of physics, no one expected light to be bent by a heavy object like the sun. So it was a risky prediction, an unexpected or surprising prediction. The only theory that predicted it was Einstein's special theory of relativity. And then when they finally actually found that that's what happens in 1919, Eddington's expedition mm -hmm. to uh, South Africa, and they actually were able to measure that deflection of light, that 
when the prediction came true, that was a powerful reason to think Einstein's hypothesis was true, because the prediction was surprising and it wasn't predicted by any other theory. It didn't make it certain, though, did it? No, this line of reasoning is never going to be able to make anything absolutely certain. Uh -huh. And then when we disconfirm a scientific theory, the simplified version of it is that a hypothesis, we have a hypothesis we want to test, we derive a prediction from it, the prediction is expected if the hypothesis is true, it's not expected if the mm -hmm. hypothesis is false. When the prediction is found to be false, the prediction does not come true, that gives us reason to think that the hypothesis is false, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the simplified version. So if I have a hypothesis and I predict that um, this liquid will boil at 205 degrees, and then we test it and it does not boil at 205 degrees, that prediction has failed and that suggests my hypothesis has failed. In reality, it's a little more complicated very much. because in reality, when we derive a prediction in science, we have a hypothesis. We have assumptions that we have to make about conditions in the world. And we also have measurements of initial conditions. We have to measure all sorts of initial conditions of our experiment and our testing and observation. And given all those things, we can derive a prediction. If the hypothesis is true and these various assumptions we have to make are true about the world and these initial measurements are true that we had to make of all sorts of things, then we derive a prediction that's expected. When the prediction is found to be false, what follows by modus tollens? You know, at least something in here is wrong. But we don't know if it's the hypothesis or one of the assumptions or one of the testing procedures. Yes. Something has gone amiss. It might be everything. Or it might just be this. So then we'll take further inquiry to figure right. out exactly what the problem is. Yes, by modus tollens, all that follows is the negation of the entire conjunction mm -hmm. of three things. So yes, it could be one, two, or three that are false. We don't know. So then to actually uh, falsify the hypothesis, what we would have to do is verify that the assumptions made were correct. We'd have to verify the initial conditions. And then it would follow that the hypothesis must be the source of the problem, that it must be false. And we're never going to be absolutely certain that we're a good we're point. true of those. Good point. Which means even though it's a validly disconfirmed hypothesis, mm -hmm. we're not going to know with any more certainty than we know these to be the case. Because these are going to be observational, yeah. so will this. So we'll never be 100% certain. Yeah. But the reasoning is, of course, valid. Yeah. It is valid reasoning that if P is, uh, you know, if this is true, then this is true. Given that, given that P has been found to be false, the prediction um, did, did not pan out. It follows that this conjunction, this triple conjunction is false. If these are verified as true, then uh, this must be the one that's false. By several applications of disjunctive syllogism, if we wanted to be, get technical, and then we would know this is false by valid deductive reasoning, but as Mark says, since we aren't 100% certain this premise is true, because it's only based on observation, hence on induction, mm -hmm. we really can't be 100% certain. Okay. But when this happens, we say that the hypothesis has been disconfirmed. Mm -hmm. And so in science, a hypothesis is formulated, but it has to be tested before we have confidence in it. And the test looks at predictions, and it's either confirmed or disconfirmed based on what we see when we look for predictions. Do predictions always have to be in the future? Prediction mm -hmm. about the future? You could predict that something's happening in the other room. So in a sense, mm -hmm. that could be a prediction about an event but that's could, happening right now. But we right could now. also have a prediction that says, if you look in the fossil record, you'll find this. Well, but the 
the looking would be in the present. Or the the looking will be, be in the present. You'd be but seeing it might something be that at, took place in the past. It so might be looking at a re the remains of for something instance, from the in, past. You might ask the question, well, how did the dinosaurs die? That would yeah. be a phenomenon requiring yeah. explanation. I could come up with a hypothesis, a meteorite struck mm -hmm. the Earth somewhere, causing a dust cloud to sh block sunlight, mm -hmm. kill plants, dinosaurs starve mm -hmm. to death after wandering around in a stupor for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, if that was the case, maybe I'd come up with a prediction there would be a layer of dust. Mm -hmm. This is of a certain ridiculous, type. A certain type of dust around the Earth. Mm -hmm. I'd go out and test that by digging. Mm -hmm. um, so my prediction would be dust got covered mm -hmm. the Earth a bunch, you know, many, mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, the event took place a long time ago. But I just needed to, I, to test out the prediction. Obviously, I need to do that in my I have own to present need time. to do something in the present yeah. time. But a prediction doesn't have to concern the present. The prediction might have to do with the past. Sure. Or it might have to do with the future. Sure. So scientific theories can be confirmed or disconfirmed to a matter of degree. Mm -hmm. And the more confirmed, the more probable. And the more disconfirmed, the less probable. And it, with science, as in all inductive endeavors, all we have is probability, not 100% certainty. But we can use high probability to land a rocket ship right on the moon in exactly the crater we're expecting it. So probability can provide incredible advances. It can get us close enough. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. So, do you think that covers main, the main things in induction? Those are some of the more common patterns. And I think you can learn a lot about reasoning when you compare deduction and induction and think about how they differ. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.